This is ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. I don't see anyone really voting against it. So as long as the chairmen of each committee that it's referred to are happy in bringing it up, I think it could actually happen. State Senator Greg Stubbe wants to do away with daylight saving time and make standard time all year around. How is that going to work? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohen and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the idea of no more daylight saving time in a moment. But first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with the battle between the chief judge of the 12th Circuit Court in Sarasota and Sheriff Tom Knight over the issue of guns in the courthouse. And the appeals court is siding with the sheriff. The court is saying Sheriff Tom Knight can return his deputies to a post at the clerk's of court's office. The issue started when State Senator Greg Stupe went out to test Judge uh, Charles Williams' ban on bringing guns into the courthouse. Stubbe argued he should be allowed to keep his firearm on him because the building is not a gun-free zone because it doesn't have any actual courtrooms. So for years, concealed license permit holders' rights have been broken by a government entity, and I just don't think that's right. Sheriff Knight says his legal team will be taking a look at the appeals court ruling before he makes a decision on what to do next. The state fire marshal is investigating a string of car fires in Venice. Christmas night, firefighters were called to a fire off of Warfield Avenue in Venice. A half an hour later, two cars were on fire just 30 feet away from the first one. When you have three vehicles that catch on fire at one location, we just want to make sure the public understands that this is, at this point, we believe it to be an isolated incident. The Venice Police Department is working with the state fire marshal's office on an arson investigation. The Florida Highway Patrol is investigating after a fatal crash on US 41 this morning. Albert McKinnon of Palmetto was pronounced dead at the scene near 69th Street East. FHP says his pickup truck crossed the median before crashing through a fence. The man suspected of leaving the scene of a crash on Interstate 75 that left three young children injured has been arrested. 63-year-old Billy Carthawood was arrested this morning and is accused of DUI and leaving the scene of a crash. Two girls, ages 6 and 8, were ejected from the SUV while riding uh, when a pickup truck hit their vehicle near Apollo Beach and Sun City. A 10-year-old boy was also injured. Police found the truck abandoned about 13 miles from the accident. Nearly 5,600 previously unprocessed sexual assault kits have now been tested according to the Attorney General's office. The recently processed kits have resulted in nearly 1,400 hits in the federal DNA database prior to a new law. Florida had not required rape kits to be tested. Law enforcement agencies are now required to submit evidence within 30 days of the beginning of investigations, and the sexual assault kits must be processed by the lab within 120 days of receipt. Now that this is in a database, I think it's going to be amazing um, the help that we're going to be able to do to get these bad guys off the street, lock them up, and help victims. Information from the newly processed rape kits will go into a database which allows federal, state, and local forensic labs to exchange and compare profiles. Juvenile arrests in Florida have dropped to the lowest level in 42 years, down 7% from last year. That makes a total of a 24% drop in the past five years. Hillsborough County had the second biggest drop at 14%. The decline includes lower numbers in felony offenses and 14% decline in overall misdemeanor arrests. As 2017 comes to a close, many people like to bring in the new year with a bang. Literally, thousands of people will watch the pineapple drop in downtown Sarasota, followed by a fireworks show. But if you choose to take matters into your own hands and shoot off fireworks, some safe, be safe, follow all county and city fireworks laws, light fireworks on a cleared area free of any vegetation or debris. Always wa have water nearby in case of a fire and clean up all the debris from the fireworks. Now let's get to a fireworks worthy 
weathercast with meteorologist Steve Newman and the first alert forecast. Steve. Hey, Alan, we're thinking that it's going to be dry at midnight, but it's going to be close because there's a cold front coming through on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day at some point that will bring a chance of showers. But right now it looks like the upper 50s to near 60 at midnight on Monday morning, New Year's Day. Currently at uh, the airport, it is 68 degrees, our dew point 61, and those dew points are going to go down into the 50s tonight, and our lows will dip down into the 50s after being in the 60s for, it seems like, a week or two. Looking at the Almanac for today, our high was 78, so we're warmer than normal there. Last night's low uh, 59, warmer as well, but we're going to even these out to even be cooler than normal in about two or three days. There is a stationary front parked over us. So it's very diffuse and weak. To the north of it, we have drier air and a nice northerly breeze that will bring a drier and cooler air overnight and start a cooling trend that'll last right on through next week. And this uh, stationary front seems to be attached uh, to a little disturbance off the Atlantic coast. Looks like a low has formed a wave on that stationary front, producing some showers out there. But looking at our future radar through the night, we'll have those light northerly breezes and a lot of clouds Maybe some fog uh, and low cloudiness in inland areas. But other than that, it looks fairly mild for the next few hours with temperatures remaining in the 60s right on through 10, 11 o'clock at night, midnight, and then bottoming out in the 50s tomorrow. Now, we could have a big polar vortex chill reach the sun coast in about a week's time. I'll tell you more about that in a few minutes. Yeah, I mean, look, cold, really cold. Yeah, how... <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Looking forward to it. <laughs> and still to come, no more falling back or springing forward. That's if say, Senator Greg Stubbe has his way. That's next. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. There's nothing like this, this trail in Alabama. It just goes from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state. We see all kind of different terrains, great value, great fun. We've been coming for 18 years. We started off with a group of eight, grew to 12, and grew to 16. And we love it because where else can you get world-class golf courses with world-class accommodations? To be able to play these type of courses in this environment and the difficulty uh, keeps us coming back over and over and over again. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline if you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring. You must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. Deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Check out mysuncoast.com slash dining, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. State Senator Greg Stubbe has his way. Changing your clocks could be a thing of the past. The Florida State Senate and House might consider bills to eliminate daylight savings time. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick explains. Sarasota Senator Greg Stubbe started the conversation, and now in just three months, Florida could join the list of three other states that'll never have to spring ahead or fall back ever again. 
It all started right here at the Braden River Barbershop. Get it off your ears? Yep. All right, you got it. Kaylin Dryman and one of her clients were talking about how much they hate daylight savings time. And in walks State Senator Greg Stubbe. He happened to come in that day to get a haircut, and it was kind of like, hey, what can we do, or what can you do, I should say, because um, everyone hates it. Is it a possibility? You know, we were picking his brain about it. Senator Stubbe said he'd look into it for them, and he did. So I filed the bill, and I've been amazed at how much the public is in support of doing away with changing the clocks back. Flash forward a few weeks when we first aired a story about Senator Stubbe's daylight savings bill. Dryman had no idea how far her idea had gone until she looked up at the TV. And we're like, no way. We were just giving him a hard time and picking his brain. We didn't think that he would actually go through with it. Today, the daylight conversation comes up at the barber shop all of the time. When it happens is when you hear about it the most. Andy Butler has his fingers crossed that this bill will become the real deal. It's, it's something that has annoyed me since I was a little kid. Um, I grew up here in Florida. The team has a consensus. They want summer hours all year long. We don't close until 5 o'clock, and by the time you get home and get dinner made and actually get time to sit down and relax with your family, it's pitch black, and you can't do anything fun outside. Plus, Dryman says it'll be easier on her kids. I have three kids, and it's, uh, it's interesting for the first week after the time change, either direction, to kind of plan and get everybody on the same schedule. Butler sees the elimination of daylight savings time as a cost saver for businesses and organizations like Braden River Little League. Daylight savings time they spend I think it's about 45 extra per field per hour. Um, so this daylight savings thing costs the Little League, just the Little League, it costs them about an extra 200 bucks a night. For Stuby, it's about tourism. Businesses, especially in the tourism industry, have said that it should be beneficial to them because the daylight and at the end of the day will obviously will still have that time and um, more people will have the opportunity to go out and do things where they otherwise may not feel comfortable doing it because it would be dark outside. Visit Sarasota doesn't see it making a huge difference because of the amount there is to do inside and outside on the Sun Coast. One of the great aspects about Sarasota is there is so much to see and do, whether it's daytime or nighttime, and the sunset's always going to set on a beautiful beach no matter what time of day it is. History shows that daylight savings time started during World War I. Many people assume it went into effect for the farmers, which couldn't be further from the truth. Most farmers actually opposed it because they needed the sun to dry the dew from their crops before they could harvest them. Daylight savings was actually established as an effort to conserve fuel needed to produce electricity. Today, Arizona, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico do not recognize daylight saving time. And Florida could be next. Senator Stubbe was first to file a daylight savings bill back in November. Now the state house has followed suit. Representative Jeanette Nunez filing a bill in December to keep daylight savings time all year long. Now this certainly is not a political issue, which is is refreshing. Stubbe says he's heard from some Floridians on the panhandle that they'd like to be a part of the eastern time zone, not the central time zone. He says that could be a part of this change as well, although it is not currently a part of either bill. I don't see I don't see anyone really voting against it. So as long as the chairmen of each committee that it's referred to are happy in bringing it up, I think it could actually happen. And to think, a conversation at a small town barber shop could shape the future of the entire state. Obviously, we want to thank Greg for listening to our voices and hearing what the people truly think. Both bills will be considered during the 2018 legislative session, which starts on January 9th. As it stands right now, Florida is scheduled to spring ahead on March 11th. Senator Stubbe is confident that will be the last time Florida residents ever have to change their clocks. Just Aldrich, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Greg Stubbe is waiting for us at the trapezoid, and so is a, a former state representative who just happens to teach the art of politics in places like Tallahassee and the president of the Chamber of Commerce because the business community might just have something to say about this. Stay with us. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? 
you need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second Spin Mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. SRQ Performance Parts provides parts and accessories from over 300 manufacturers so you can get that new manifold, carburetor, gasket, bolt kit, or nitrous oxide system fast. We'll help you beat the competition. Call or visit SRQ Performance Parts online today for all your high-performance parts and advice. Florida Studio Theater has extended the eight-time Tony Award winner Once. Captivating and breathtaking, Once is an unforgettable story about going for your dreams and the power of music to connect us all. Critics are calling Once engaging and heartwarming, outstanding, and a flawless production. Audiences are calling it phenomenal and better than Broadway. Once is now playing through January 14th. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941-366-9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking an experienced broadcast engineer to provide technical support for all broadcast equipment. TV broadcast background required. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. Welcome back. Do you care if the sun is still out when you leave work? A bit of history, daylight saving time was created in 1918 during World War I to save energy. The business industry liked it because you can get more done. A lot of moms and dads and pet owners are not crazy about it because, as a lot of us know, kids and pets and many adults don't take well to schedule changes. The question is, is it one of the top issues in the floor of the legislature that it needs to take action on? State Senator Greg Stubbe thinks so, and joining us for more is State Senator Greg Stubbe, former State Representative Keith Fitzgerald, who teaches political science at New College, and Kevin Cooper, president of the Greater Sarasota Chamber of Commerce. If anything, um, what this shows us and what Jess just reported is you can go up to your state representative or senator in a place like a barber shop, <laughs> suggest a bill that turns into a real bill in Tallahassee. It's the greatest example of how a bill may become a law. I mean, there's not a better way of the citizenry and, and constituents coming to their elected official and saying, hey, this is something that we think needs to be changed. And it was interesting because, I mean, the, the what you talked about beforehand did a good job of kind of talking about how it all happened. But as I walked into the barbershop, they were like, hey, we were just talking about you. And is this That's something you can change? <laughs> yeah, in this case it was. And, um, you know, it's, it was something that at first I didn't think would be that big of an issue. And it's turned into something that affects all of us and has been an issue where if you look across the state, it's like 75, 80 percent of folks think we should do away with swatching the times. Keith, you've been there yourself and you teach kids about how Tallahassee works. How many times in any legislative session do state reps and state senators bring along these types of bills? Um, and, and how often do they get somewhere and how often do they not? Well, first of all, I agree that people can actually influence their legislator uh, to do things uh, while they're up there. Uh, my friend Bob Graham, uh, Senator Bob Graham and Chris Hand wrote a little book, sort of a citizen's guide to how you do this. You can do it. Most people just don't have the wherewithal, the know-how, how to make it happen. So if you can figure it out, you can get things done. But one of the things that any legislator has to do, uh, since it's very difficult for people to understand what they're up to, 
what they're actually doing is sort of advertise their activity. And so a lot of legislators will put bills in that show that they are listening to their constituents. Most of them don't go anywhere. That doesn't mean that it's a useless uh, thing to do or an unimportant thing to do. Kevin, I've heard two things from the business community in the articles that, that I wrote. Uh, I mean, on one hand, businesses uh, would like it to be lighter out longer in the day. On the other hand, some businesses may, or, or corporations may not like uh, the fact that they would be out of sync of surrounding states. We reported there are a, a handful of states that have eliminated uh, daylight savings time, but not all. Um, you know, what, what kind of hear things do you hear in, in our community? Yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag in that respect, and I think what you need to consider when looking at those two sides of it is the short-term cost of adjusting to it and then the long-term benefit of it. And remember, business owners are, are citizens, just like those great uh, senators Stubbe ran into, that are looking at, well, what happens with my kids? What happens with my dog? Do I want to get home from work at 6 o'clock when it's dark and not have any time to spend outside? And so they're looking at it from both sides of the things, and I would presume from a short-term cost uh, a perspective of adjusting to the fact that, hey, we might be sh switching. But we have a, if you're doing a business around the country, Arizona, Hawaii, they don't practice this at all. And there's, there's ways that we've found to do business in this state, have commerce cross state lines and do that. So presumably it can happen. It's not an insurmountable thing. Uh, and then it's the personal and business benefits that you might ignore from it uh, could outweigh it. Okay, we are just getting warmed up and we'll have much more on daylight savings time right after we take a check of the first alert weather. Stay with us. Are you currently on Medicare? In other words, do you carry the red, white, and blue Medicare card? If so, are you suffering from chronic back pain? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a pain-relieving back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost, shipped directly to your home for free. These medical-grade back braces are ideal for lower back pain, arthritis, spinal disorders, and other chronic back problems. Our accredited staff will handle all of the Medicare paperwork for free. And best of all, your brace is shipped directly to your home for free. Don't let chronic lower back pain slow you down. Get moving and stay active with a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare at little to no cost. We also accept Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, and other insurance. Will you qualify for a medical-grade back brace covered by Medicare? Find out for free. Call Back Brace America at 1-800-715-0835. That's 1-800-715-0835. 1-800-715-0835. We are problem solvers striving for answers. Relevancy on every platform. We are driven to create content that's compelling, engaging, where it matters. We are neighbors that care about solutions, believers in making a difference. Leaders, innovating in an exciting era of multimedia, reaching to always be the gold standard in our evolving landscape. We are Raycom Media. Find your opportunity today. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. To be able to just get my son here and not think about how we will pay for it, it just takes so much weight off of my family. St. Jude allowed me to focus on being a mom to Bryce. And sometimes I'm just in awe of the impact St. Jude has, not only on this community, but the world. Our conversation on daylight saving time continues right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with meteorologist Steve Newman. Steve. I uh, hope you liked today and enjoyed the warmth because it's probably the last of the temperatures in the 70s and being in the 60s in the evening. As a series of cool fronts will come through and drop our temperatures over the next week to considerably cooler than normal. At 545, 550, we saw the sun setting over Sarasota Bay in the Gulf of Mexico. Currently at the airport, it is 68, the dew point 61. Humidity 78% and those north winds are ushering in drier air that will drop our temperatures oh so slightly tomorrow and then more as we move into the weekend. These are high temperatures today, 76 at Tampa, 80 at Fort Myers, and you can kind of see the boundary between in that stationary front with the cooler 
and drier air to the north and temperatures in the low 80s down south. Across our viewing area, 78 in Sarasota, 75 at Arcadia, Lake Placid 79. Now, a taste of winter is ahead. Not talking about a big drop in temperatures over the next week, but we are going to see temperatures slide over the weekend, 3-4 degrees into the 70s. We do have some high clouds to the north of us and off the Atlantic coast there's a little low forming off the Atlantic coast off Cape Canaveral and it's producing some showers up there and we also have some showers up in the northern part of the state. Looking at the current weather pattern, it is bitterly cold up north. Look at that Alberta clipper moving across the northern states around Chicago, getting some snow and the temperatures right now. I think we've got some problems with the computer. Let's uh, come back and do weather in a little bit. There's nothing like this, this trail in Alabama. It just goes from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state. We see all kind of different terrains, great value, great fun. We've been coming for 18 years. We started off with a group of eight, grew to 12, and grew to 16. And we love it because where else can you get world-class golf courses with world-class accommodations? To be able to play these type of courses in this environment and the difficulty uh, keeps us coming back over and over and over again. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now, make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-628-1251. 800-628-1251. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Stay connected to your clients and new customers using ABC7 Digital Media Services. Our team of professionals provide a wide array of digital services to help you get the most out of your website. We specialize in building and helping you maintain the most effective digital solutions for your business. It's vital that your online presence stands out, so our experts will equip you with the best resources available. Trust ABC7 Digital Media Services to give you the right tools to grow your business. Welcome back. Should Florida get rid of daylight saving time? And joining us for more is State Senator Greg Stubbe, former State Representative Keith Fitzgerald, who teaches political science at New College, and Kevin Cooper, President of the Greater Sarasota Chamber of Commerce. One interesting part of this is, you know, we have so many partisan issues in the state. This is not one of them because uh, I think you pointed out, uh, Greg, that the last time this was proposed, it was uh, in 2016 by a Democrat from mm -hmm. Coconut Grove, but why didn't it go anywhere then? He didn't have a Senate companion, so he filed a bill in the House and there wasn't a Senate companion, so the bill basically died. And uh, shortly after I filed the bill in the Senate, um, House leadership contacted me and there's now a bill that's filed by Representative Nunez in the House. And um, she's in the leadership in the House. And I've got a pretty good feeling that it'll probably move on the House side. Uh, Speaker Corcoran? Yeah, I mean, Speaker Jeanette Nunez is Speaker Corcoran's pro temp. So if she's filing a bill, that's a pretty strong signal that the House leadership is in support of the direction that's going. Now, there are pros and cons. And Kevin, I would imagine, and we were talking about this during the break, if Florida does this alone and surrounding states don't, 
what kind of problems does that cause business? It's, it, it, the problems are an adjustment period, and there's certainly a cost associated with it when you're talking about dealing with people out of different time zones. But you know, across the United States, there's four different time zones. So those that are used to dealing outside of state commerce are already kind of used to, to a certain degree, dealing with different time zones. And so there's an adjustment period of understanding how does that work, where are my clients, where are my suppliers, how does this operate. And so that's the really key part of it. It's not a wholly, you know, out of the whack concept to think of dealing with different times as inside the United States. We do that on a daily basis, whether you're getting on a plane, you fly somewhere, you land, you think you're late, but you're not late because the time change and everything's fine. You can make that connection in Chicago even though the time zone is different. So it's really about the adjustment period. I, I think long term, the ramifications are minimal. It's really a short term, upfront, human nature, cost of change. And that's the issue at hand. And, and as I mentioned, this is uh, something that has not been a partisan issue, but I would imagine, uh, Senator, there, that there are a number of people who are watching this right now would say, geez, there are so many more pressing issues that the legislature has to deal with. We, we did a show yesterday on homelessness, and this keeps on coming up how we are le dead last in the country in spending on mental health and, and how much it costs us in other ways. Aren't those issues that you and other legislators should be spending more time on? Well, there's a lot of issues. I think I have almost 50 bills filed this year. So mm -hmm. in the Senate, we, we can get involved in a lot of different issues. And when you hear from your constituency that this is something that they want to see move forward, and you start a discussion and you see how much support there actually is in the state to move it forward, I think it's, a, it, it's certainly an issue that needs to be discussed. And if it's something that the, the majority of the members support, We'll move it forward. Keith, how does this usually work? What I have noticed uh, in the Florida legislature is, you know, the bills keep plodding along and then you reach a bottleneck at the end of the session and it's, I, how is it decided which bills come up for a vote in, in both houses and which don't? So the, the main driver of what bills get heard and don't get heard are the parties. And in fact, the majority party, because one way of thinking about parties, this is a political science thing, is more than determining votes themselves, they determine what gets on the agenda. That's why they have rules committees in legislatures. It sounds like a boring thing to be on a rules committee. It's always one of the most powerful committees because they're figuring out what bills come up at what time and under what rules uh, in conjunction with the leadership. So the leadership is the most important thing the majority of the party d determines what bills come up and won't, don't, don't come up. And, you know, there's a, always in every legislature different rules about how autonomous committee chairs are or are not. Uh, in the state house right now, boy, committee chairs don't have a whole lot of power. It really comes out of the speaker's office. Senate, senators are a little more independent. They can move things a little more if they have a committee chair. So it varies. And, and I would say the cost of doing a bill is not really great. Uh, if it's not controversial, and if it's not a big gnarly thing that takes a great deal of staff time. Uh, controversial bills generally have a lot of costs attached to them. Right, but uh, Senator, you, have you received any pushback from anybody in the legislature, Republican or Democrat? No, and, and what's been interesting is, you know, I filed it because folks in my constituency thought it was a good idea to file it, and there's been such a huge outpouring of support from a lot of parents with young children that say, it takes my kids two, three weeks to a month to adjust to falling back on the times and that they would really support the time change. So I think it's something that if you look a across the state, it's like a 75, 80% approval rate to do away with the time change. And pets, I might add, because our dogs got up an hour earlier when we thought we gained an hour, but you know, <laughs> I digress. But I, for a moment, let's talk about why the government started this in the first place. As we mentioned, it goes back to World War I in an effort to conserve energy, uh, which is something that we, we still should be conscious of. Why not be as conscious of, or has technology changed the fact that it's really not the same issue? Well, it's interesting. In the early 2000s, the United States government extended daylight savings times by about four weeks, two weeks on either end. And, and part of that act was they required the Department of Energy to do a study to say, hey, did this have any impact? And what it showed, it was really de minimis. You did not see any massive change in energy consumption. I think it was about three-tenths of a percent change. But what you saw is you might save some energy in the summer, but then heating bills go up in the winter. And you see this, and, and especially now that we live in a different culture where you've got iPads, you've got electric vehicles, you've got a lot of different uses for a lot of different electricity consumption where back in 1918 when this was first put in play during World War II, it was about fuel to light your home. 
It was about fuel to light the streets, and that's what it all was about. And so you have so many different things at play now, it's hard to really tell whether it has much of an impact. And that's why it makes such a great public policy study. It's not partisan. It's not incendiary like homelessness. It's not Republican, Democrat like taxation. It's a pure question of why do we do what we do, what are the costs, and what are the benefits? And I think that's why it's a great conversation and to have. Also on that point, long term versus short term. Because that's right. there would be upfront costs, no question about it. I don't know what they would be, but there would be some. Long term, it might be of benefit. I don't think anybody is crazy about this, and it's hard to say that it pr serves any particular purpose today. But then the question, obviously, would be is why isn't the federal government taking this on? Because, and correct me if I'm wrong, what Florida would need to do is opt out of a federal law. If more and more people think this is the way to go, why isn't Congress just getting rid of it? Well, they might. It usually takes Congress a long time to decide what to do once certain states start to do it. I mean, just look, just look at medical marijuana, how mm -hmm. long it's taken the federal government to do anything. They haven't done anything. You have, what, it's like 28 states now that recognize medical marijuana. So I think if Florida were to adopt this change, I think you'd see a lot of other southern states probably follow suit, and then Congress would probably say, okay, we've got a fair number of states that think this you know, this was instituted back in World War I. It's not relevant to today, and states don't want to change their, their clocks back and forth. Let's just let them do what they want to do. Well, and it's, and it's not necessarily opting out of federal law. The federal law says you can choose A or you can choose B. It doesn't matter to us which one you choose. So the federal government isn't giving much guidance to the states. It just says, hey, if you're going to do this, that's fine. If you're going to do that, that's fine. And there's very minimal guidance about where the time zone lines fall within the state in case a state falls in the middle of a time zone. They have some intricacies there. But yeah, it's not about opting out. The federal government hasn't given really stern, firm direction one way or the other. It says, hey, you can kind of do Well, and on want. that issue with the two different time zones, because our panhandle is in central time, so they're an hour back, and I can't tell you how many people have contacted me and the senators in the districts that represent the panhandle who have said, we want to be in eastern time. We don't want to be an hour behind. So that may be something that we discuss as this bill moves forward no. to make the whole state into one time zone. Two, two questions about that. So that is not part of this bill as Not as currently, but I think it will as it moves forward. How did, how did we get to a point where you had different parts of the state uh, in different time zones in the I first place? I have no idea. Well, it's, it's just by geography, basically. The, you know, the sun is setting earlier uh, in one part of the state than the other. I mean, that's why we have time zones in the first place. Now, that's fixed in nature. Um, not where the lines are drawn exactly, but just the fact that you need different time zones. Um, but, you know, about Congress, the United States federal government, Congress is going in the opposite direction of med medical marijuana, so you can't count on them. And the other thing, the United States Congress is hardly doing anything. Uh, this last year was one of the lowest levels of legislation in modern times. So I don't think you can count on the federal government coming in and addressing an issue, even if it's not particularly controversial. Well, th that is the thing. I mean, if you're talking about medical marijuana, there is uh, there are those who support it and who do not support it. This, as we have been talking about, is not something that traditionally has been a partisan issue. Yeah, it's not. And I think I think to Senator Stubbe's point, I think it, it, if the dominoes start to fall with Florida and Florida does the heavy lifting of showing how it can be done, I, I don't see any reason that other southern states wouldn't follow suit. Uh, you know, especially if you go with the House bill that says, hey, you're going to get an hour. You know, when we hit daylight savings time, we're going to stay there. I think largely when you talk to people in an anecdotal sense, it's very popular amongst the constituency of, hey, I like summertime versus wintertime. They don't know the difference between standard and daylight saving. And so when you get there, I think you'd see the dominoes fall. What, one more question. Uh, we have less than a minute left, but has this been assigned to committee yet? Yeah, I have three committees in the in the Senate. I don't know about the committee references in the House, but I've got three committees in the Senate, and I've reached out to committee chair of the first committee, Community Affairs, at Senator Lee, and I'm hopeful that he'll get it up in the first or second week of session. Right, and is there, Kevin, uh, Keith, very quickly, is there a secret in terms of if a bill is assigned to several committees, whether or not it's more or less likely to pass? It depends on the rules. In, in some legislators, legislatures, it has to go through each and every committee. So the more barriers there are, the lower the chances. In others, it can pass out of any committee. So it depends on the rules of the particular legislature. OK, we have to take a quick break. And we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them. And she's doing fine. 
It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. Mark Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. Thanks to all of you who participated in ABC7's Paris Vacation Giveaway Contest. Join us as we congratulate our grand prize winner, Heather Caston of Bradenton. She and her husband, Clint, are going on an amazing six-night dream vacation for two to Paris, the most romantic city in the world. Thank, Thank you, ABC7, for going to Paris. Congratulations, Heather and Clint. We hope you have the trip of your lives. ABC7, we're here for you. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Our guests joining us right now for final thoughts. So, Senator, where do we go from here? How soon are we going to see whether or not this is going to get anywhere in the legislature? Session starts January 9th. It's got uh, three committee stops. Hopefully, if it gets up in the first committee that first week of session, then it's got two more committee stops, and um, you've got eight weeks in order to get that through. And given that the House leadership is supportive of it on the House side, I think it'll move through the House. So I think it's just watching to see what happens on the Senate side and if the bill moves. And if it moves and if it starts to move through the process, I feel pretty confident that, that it'll pass. Keith, I'm going to ask you a question I don't know if you have an answer for, but how many bills are filed in the legislature every year by the House and the Senate, and how many actually get voted into law? You know, I forget the proportion mathematically. I, th I think it's something like one out of eight or something like that. I could be wrong. Now, senators file a lot more bills because they have no limits. In the House, you only get six. So you're really careful about what bills you file. Uh, but still, the proportion of bills that pass to file is pretty small. And, and usually when, you, when it gets later into the legislative session, it becomes more difficult as the big ticket items. One of the, one of the cool things about legislation is that time is a non-fungible resource. So as you move toward the end of the session, Every minute you take on the floor that you're not passing bills, bills are dying. And the, so a lot of really intricate uh, policy making gets made during those last several days. Kevin, we, we heard a comment from uh, uh, Visit uh, Sarasota saying that it does not believe that this bill will have an impact one way or another on our chief, um, chief business around here, which is tourism. Uh, I mean, do you, do you think that you're going to be fine part of the business you know, community which are not on the same page when it comes to this? I think so. I think to a certain extent you might see retail businesses, restaurants they might want to see. I mean, what we know is that daylight encourages activity. People want to be out at St. Armand Circle on Venice Main Street walking around during the daytime, looking at the, into the shop, seeing what's going on. They want to sit outside on the patios and have dinner during the, during the uh, dinner time. But at the same time, we have a lot of great amenities, cultural amenities that you're inside. It doesn't matter what time of day it is when you go to the Van Wazel. It, it simply doesn't matter. And so there'll be that tug and pull, but I think it, there's definitely some benefits to be had. And it really it depends. What is the tourism want? Where is the money going to flow uh, during the difference in the daylight saving versus standard time? And that's the real question. Uh, you know, on the other hand, you had that fellow in the, the story who said that this will help Little League in yeah. terms of saving money. But on the flip side of that, you know, we know how it is when our kids have to get up and go to school in the dark in the morning, which has some public safety issues. 
Yeah, I had a number of different mayors and city leaders contact me and said that they, they support it because the city's going to save money because later in the evening when they have to turn the lights on, they're going to save money in having to turn the lights on. So it kind of is both sides. I think the real frustration from the people that I've talked to, and especially parents, is when you have to turn back the clocks, that adjustment in time for children to have to adjust to losing an hour of time mm -hmm. and getting up earlier and getting to school has been the, the main challenge. So regardless of what time we end up in, which I, I think the daylight savings time is the best, you don't have to flop your clocks back and forth, no which I think is the biggest thing. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of you had to say about last night's show on reports showing homelessness has declined over the past year. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development is boasting about a declining homeless population for Florida. The report shows a 4% decrease in homeless persons on a single night in Florida. Here on the Sun Coast, homelessness dropped, but only 1.5%. We went to Facebook, and here are some of your thoughts. Felicity says, our community needs to pull together and help one another where we can, not as enabling addiction or giving cash to an able-bodied person who can work, but for volunteers, make a difference. It's just not the government's responsibility. It is ours too. April says lots of people lost their homes during the market crash and wages don't match cost of living. All I see is catering to rich and tourists to get out of area people to move here. Wait until the crash happens again and it will. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. And FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And for the latest on local breaking news, don't forget to download the updated version of our app. If your current app doesn't work, that's because it's expired. Just go to the App Store and re-download it by searching for WWSB or My Sun Coast. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight. State Senator Greg Stubbe, former State Representative Keith Fitzgerald, who teaches political science at New College, and Kevin Cooper, President of the Greater Sarasota Chamber of Commerce. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert weather. Plus, it's official. Democrat Doug Jones is the winner of the vacant Senate seat in Alabama. What does this mean for Roy Moore? Stay with us. Do you have type 2 diabetes, which requires daily blood monitoring? If you have diabetes, are you on Medicare, Obamacare, or other health insurance? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for diabetic testing supplies at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you. Our accredited staff will handle all of your paperwork for free. And best of all, your diabetic testing supplies are shipped directly to your home for free. Call now to see if you qualify for a meter upgrade and a free pedometer to monitor your daily walking. Use alternate testing sites, a smaller blood sample, and even hear your results out loud. Will you qualify for diabetic testing supplies at an upgraded meter? covered by Medicare, Obamacare, or health insurance at little to no out-of-pocket cost to you? Find out for free by calling the Diabetes Resource Center at 1-800-394-1098. That's 1-800-394-1098. 1-800-394-1098. It's the holiday sales event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKC Sport Utility for $269 per month or a 2017 MKZ for $279 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, affordable luxury, winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award, serving Florida Sun Coast since 1978. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. I'm Anne. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get the final check on the first alert forecast from meteorologist Steve Newman. Steve. Alan, a lot of people are wanting cooler weather, and believe it or not, the cooler weather is going to be here in about a day's time. Today was a transition day. We had a lot of high clouds passing overhead, and a little drier air is starting to blow in from the north, and we can see the current conditions at the airport. North-northeast north, north winds at 9 miles an hour, 68 
And our dew points that have been in the 60s for the last couple of days are going to drift down to the 50s. That will allow a cooling off overnight. And here is the culprit. We've got a stationary front stretch from the Atlantic across Florida out of the Gulf of Mexico to the north of it. A little bit drier air, believe it or not, despite all those clouds and more moisture to the south. And that front is going to wobble up and down for the next day or so and eventually lead the way for another stronger cold front coming in on New Year's. There is some rain up in northern parts of the state right now and another little disturbance off the Atlantic coast, but that's nothing compared to the wintry conditions they have in the Midwest. This is an Alberta clipper, a fast moving snowstorm that came out of the Canadian prairies a day or so ago, moved across southern Minnesota and Iowa with stronger snow, but you can see it's beginning to dissipate. But an interesting thing, it has shifted the winds from the south to the north, which is opposite pretty much of the lake effect pattern. And there is a lake effect snow going on right through the heart of Lake Michigan, hitting the upper peninsula of Michigan from the back way. And over Lake Huron, there's another similar pattern heading up towards Sault Ste. Marie. So uh, hopefully we will not see a big onslaught of that uh, lake effect snow that's just dumped many areas along Lake Erie and Lake Ontario the last couple, three or four days. High pressure and a strong jet stream across the nation, at least the northern third of the nation is keeping that bitterly cold air locked in up north. Some of it spilling south. Pittsburgh right now is 13 degrees, 9 in Syracuse. Sudbury, Ontario, minus 8. Chicago, 13. A little bit warmer in some spots than we were this time last night. Kansas City, believe it or not, is warmer at 25. Omaha, 16. And the chill goes all the way down to the Gulf Coast where Houston is 43. Well, what's going to happen with this polar vortex, this big pool of colder air? Well, for one thing, as it moves our south, it's going to cut off us being the hottest temperature in the nation, allowing that to happen out west in the desert southwest. Southern California are going to be in the 70s and low 80s while we cool off in the 50s and 60s. Well, taking a look at our future cast, we will show that front wavering back and forth and eventually stalling out over the Florida Strait. A nice north wind. So the effect for the next couple of days is we'll have fair to partly cloudy skies skies with a slightly cooler air mass in place. But this is the front we're looking at for New Year's Eve and by Saturday evening it's stretched across the Florida Panhandle. Now the timing of when it gets here is the rub because we want it to be dry pretty much for New Year's Eve when you're outside because look there's some showers feeding into that moisture. So if it comes through before midnight we might have some sprinkles. I'm hoping it'll hold off till three or four in the morning which some of the models are suggesting. Out on the water tomorrow north winds 10 knots, seas two feet, the beach temperature 69, so it's going to be considerably cooler. Water temperature 71. Here's the forecast for tonight. Your first alert forecast calls for very big clouds and patches of fog, mainly inland again. Our low temperature 58 with northeast winds 5 to 10. And tomorrow, a lot of clouds and cooler, high only 71. That's actually cooler than normal. And here's the seven day outlook showing as we move into the new year, our weather patterns do change cooling off to 69 on Saturday. It tries to recover on New Year's Eve a little bit, then the front comes through at some point. Temperatures at midnight New Year's Eve will be around 60, maybe 58 to 60 degrees, and then a chance of rain for a couple of days and turning cooler late next week. And that's your weather. Alan will be back with primetime headlines right after these words. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. 
I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. Full Moon Promotions is proud to bring you the New Year's event you've been waiting for. Made possible by Gettle Automotive Group, Age Vital Pharmacy, Cool Today, Wagner Realty, and Tito's Vodka. The fun starts at 9 with complimentary valet, a red carpet reception, open top shelf bar with endless champagne, hors d'oeuvres from j Sushi and Premier Catering, and Reverend Barry and the Funk, live entertainment, dancing and fun till 2 a.m. The Municipal Auditorium in Sarasota. Purchase tickets online at sarasotamye.com. Checking primetime headlines, remember that crazy Alabama Senate race that ended earlier this month with Democrat, the Democrat actually winning in the ruby red state? Roy Moore never conceded the defeat. Today, the state certified Democrat Doug Jones won, and Moore still is not conceding defeat. ABC's Gloria Rivera has the story. Republican Roy Moore's legal battle to contest the Alabama Senate election results has taken a big hit. An Alabama circuit court judge throwing out Moore's election fraud complaint and claimed that irregularities could reverse the results. After an investigation, the Secretary of State of Alabama saying... It was determined that that was all made up. There was no fact to it at all. It was completely fiction. Today, the results in favor of winner Democrat Doug Jones were made official. The uh, margin of victory in the, in the election was 21,924. 21, the Moore team claimed three election integrity experts say there were irregularities in 20 precincts in Jefferson County alone that could reverse results. An alleged Moore took a polygraph test that proved his innocence against charges of sexual misconduct against minors. Charges Moore had denied throughout the campaign. Moore has two days to file for a recount which his campaign would have to pay for. With Doug Jones, the balance in the Senate will be 51 to 49 Republicans to Democrats, and that gives Republicans on the fence about certain issues new leverage to demand more from the GOP in negotiations. Gloria Riviera, ABC News, Washington. Remember that bromance between President Trump and Chinese President Xi that was uh, so much in the news earlier this year? President Trump is now slamming China's government, accusing it of allowing oil into North Korea in violation of international sanctions.